Now here is Solomon. And we have uh, all of our lives, I'm as guilty as anybody else. I have held Solomon in high esteem. He was the gifted son of, of David. Uh, he, we read about him when he was born that God loved Solomon. That was in uh, first, uh, Second Samuel chapter uh, 12. You can read that. God loved Samuel. God loved uh, uh, Solomon. And, uh, he, uh, and we read again in Ezekiel, no, in uh, Nehemiah chapter 13, where it emphasizes God loved Solomon. And we've read those verses, and they have, they've, they've, they've really locked a whole lot of ideas into our heads. Because if God loves someone, well, then they must be, they must, and particularly in our, in our uh, King James translation, in, in, in uh, Nehemiah, it says he was beloved, beloved. And that is especially a term that is speaking about true believers. But we never took the time to check out his life. We do know, for example, that if we go to, oh, let me see. Let, let's go to Second Samuel chapter, um, or Second Chronicles, rather, uh, or Second Samuel chapter 12. Let's say, was, oh, oh, that's where he, that's where, in verse 24, that's where God loved the baby Samuel. And then we go uh, to Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7. And we read there uh, in uh, verse 1 Kings chapter 10. 1 Kings chapter 10. Incidentally, when we talk about God loved Solomon, remember, we read in Ephesians 5, verse 25, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And we're going to see that, Satan, that uh, Solomon was a picture of the congregations, and he loved, uh, he, God says he loved the church. If you go to Psalm 87, verse 2, you find that God loves the gates of Zion. And so just because there is love. And you know, when we go to John 14, there are, such, there are conditions with love. We go to John 14, and we see there, we see there uh, in John 14 that uh, he, in verse 21, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Now, notice, he that keepeth my commandments. Let's keep that in our minds as we're looking at Solomon. But in 1 Kings chapter 10, we went out. But we read here uh, in verse 23 of 1 Chronicles chapter 29. Solomon sat on the throne of Jehovah as king instead of David his father and prospered. And all Israel obeyed him. And all the princes and the mighty men and all the sons likewise of King David submitted themselves unto Solomon the king. And Jehovah magnified Solomon exceedingly in the sight of all Israel and bestowed upon him such royal majesty as had not been on any king before him in Israel. My, my, can you think of anyone in the Bible who had such wonderful commendation about him as this, what is said of Solomon? Let's cut that out of the Bible now and put that up on the wall. Now, there it is. Don't you dare say it that Solomon was a problem of any kind. Well, then we, uh, then we look again at uh, Solomon as he, uh, as, he, 
uh, encourages others. Go to First Kings chapter eight. First Kings chapter eight. And uh, there we read in uh, verse fifty nine and uh, verse First uh, Kings chapter eight, verse fifty. No, let's go to verse uh, uh, verse uh, 46. Yeah, Solomon is praying. This is at the dedication of the temple. Solomon now had been reigning for 11 years. This is still fairly early in his reign. And he says in 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 46, uh, uh, as he's praying to God, He's saying, If people sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they are carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry them captive, saying, we have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness and so return unto thee with all their heart, with all their soul in the land of their enemies which led them away captive and pray unto thee toward their land which thou gavest them their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen and the house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee. Give them compassion before them that carried them captive, that they may have compassion on them, for they be thy people and thine inheritance which thou brought out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron. In other words, here we see Solomon, in the eleventh year of his reign, he is praying. He's standing there on a big uh, raised place. It's at the dedication, the end of the dedication of the temple. He's got his hands up like this, and he is really saying all wonderful things. If people will repent, they're going to sin, of course, but if they repent, God will forgive. Do you know, at least I haven't been able to find this, anywhere in the Bible, when it talks about Solomon repenting of anything, he never repented. We don't read any place about him repenting even though he is saying these very wonderful, wonderful words. Physician, heal thyself. You see the point? In other words, he said the right things. He knew what the truth was. God had given him the truth, but he did not follow the truth. Now we read about Solomon. We go back to First Kings. Chapter 9, chapter 9, God came to him. Let me see, in, uh, in uh, um, already in chapter, uh, in chapter, uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, 1 Kings chapter 3, 